Hey, it's Tom, and this is some kind of special video, because uh, last time I presented you how to build a Twitter bot using Puppeteer, and after publishing this video, I received a couple private messages, and I have seen many comments that uh, building a bot for an app which has official API might be not a good idea, because uh, Twitter anyway can detect that you're using a bot and can ban your account. And of course, I'm aware of that, and I mentioned that in the last video. Uh, but today, I would like to show you uh, how you can get access to official uh, Twitter API and how you can use that to monitor Twitter data, uh, also in real time. Uh, so let's jump to the code. Okay, so today we are building a Node.js app that will use official Twitter API to fetch recent uh, tweets. Uh, which contains some, some word or some hashtag. And then I will show you how we can use uh, live streaming from Twitter to constantly get uh, new updates from Twitter with uh, some particular data that we are interested in. So today uh, we will use a couple libraries. The first one is Tweet. Uh, it's a Node.js, it's a JavaScript library that allows us to uh, handle co connection and communication with Twitter, uh, it makes much easier to uh, establish um, out authentication and then to uh, run very basic operations like to post data, to fetch data, to use uh, live streaming and so on. So we'll go into details in a moment. But at first, uh, it's very important to re remember that if you want to get access to uh, official Twitter API, you have to request uh, a developer account. So you have to go to developer.twitter.com and then uh, you will be able to see some kind of uh, basic website. And then you have to request access to uh, official uh, Twitter API. So you will have to answer a couple questions, why you want the access for Twitter API, uh, how you will use that and so on. And after 10, 14 days, you will get an email with information that you got access to um, Twitter API, you, your developer account was created and you can create some apps. So for today, we will use the app that uh, I created a um, couple of years ago. Uh, when I was trying to run my, my startup, which was uh, some kind of a clone of Buffer. Uh, it of course failed, but I still have the uh, app created in my developer account. And if you will create a new app on your developer account, you will see something like this. So there are a couple app details. You have to provide icon, description of the app, uh, select what permissions the app wants to have, uh, provide a callback URL if you will uh, like to allow uh, sign in with your app for your uh, users. This domain is already free uh, as far as I know. And then you will see something like this and keys and tokens. This is the most important part for us uh, as for today. So there is consumer API keys and access token and access token secret. So if you will use the consumer API keys, you will allow you will be able to allow your clients uh, or your users to sign in sign in with your app using OAuth, and then you will get the access token and access token secret for each particular user. And this section, access token and access token secret, are the access token and access token secret uh, when you would like to sign in as your app. So any operation that we will uh, do uh, using uh, those all keys will be done as the app. So in this case, it will be done as a post manager and not as any uh, particular user. And of course, the last section is uh, permissions that you would like to uh, have for your app. Okay, so let's go back to the code. I will move it here. And as you see uh, right here, I just copied all the data from my developer account. And uh, 
it's not a problem to publish that right now because you can regenerate it at any moment. So after publishing, before publishing this video, I will just do that so nobody else will be able to uh, use my credentials. Then we create a new tweet object and this operation already creates established connection to Twitter API. So uh, it uses OAuth to authenticate us. And right now the object T will be able to uh, do some, some data uh, as, as our app. Okay, so the next section is just uh, uh, searching for uh, tweets. So the first thing we will do is just get recent tweets which contain a Tesla hashtag. And we can limit that to, for example, maybe just mo most recent 10. And okay, let's move to the console, node index. And if we will run that, you will see that we re received the 10 tweets. Uh, we, right here, we provide the, the time limit. So it will be the 15th of uh, April of this year. And the data that is re returned is, uh, hmm, is pretty rich. Statuses, uh, oh, okay, uh, statuses is, is an array. Anyway, there are only two tweets. That's strange. But each tweet contains uh, a lot of data and we would like to e extract that for sure. So uh, right now we can do it like this. And this data should be a little bit more readable for us. Okay. And as you see, uh, the status is, is an array of the tweets. And right now we have, uh, we have actual array of, of the, the tweets. So each tweet contains ID, uh, ID string. If we would like to get the, mm, to, to the par particular ID, uh, to the particular tweet, we should use ID, uh, ID string, which is different than ID, because ID is probably some kind of uh, internal ID used by uh, Twitter. Then we have text, which is uh, important for us. And then there is some data about users. So uh, name, screen name, location, and any other data that is, that is uh, publicly available. So, if you would be, for example, uh, maybe Elon Musk interested in, in tweets with uh, Tesla hashtag, then uh, it might be also important for you uh, to know what is the particular language of those tweets. And to, it is also available to do that uh, using, of course, JavaScript. And to, to do that, we will use uh, let me just clear it. Uh, Frank library. And Frank library is available for many languages, um, for R, for Python, and uh, probably Go, Rust, yeah, many languages. So this library allows us to quickly uh, define the language of the tweet, which might be really interesting, especially if you are not native English. Uh, because maybe you would all, you would only you would only like to uh, track tweets which are written in your native language, or if you are based in, for example, US, you are only interested in uh, tweets which are written in uh, English language. So right here, uh, we will just map the each uh, tweet to to not return the whole object, but to, to just return the text because the text is what we are interested in. And we'll call the Frank library to uh, tell us what is the, uh, the the language of the tweet. So, okay, let's run it. And yeah, there are uh, four tweets. Uh, Deutsch, uh, this is, I don't know what's the language uh glg and the next one is english which is uh of course interesting for us and sco scottish probably 
anyway, you see how it's working. Uh, it's it, it's pretty easy to filter the tweets. And the next thing we can do is to just uh, only filter those which are which contain Elon, because we might be interested uh, only in tweets which uh, mention Tesla, but also mentioning Elon uh, uh, somehow. So we will just lowercase the text and then uh, check if it contains Elon. So we can increase the count uh, to 100, because it might be just, just easier to, uh, to find them, and then we can run them. And as you see, there are at least, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 tweets which contain both hashtag Tesla and word Elon. And yeah, this is basically how the social media monitoring works. Uh, this is the very basic way, of course. And uh, that's how you can track uh, tweets and ask Twitter for, for tweets containing some uh, interesting data. Uh, I don't know, probably 400 times per day if I'm correct, uh, on the on the page with the with with your developer account, you will also see uh, the limits. Oh yeah, it's right here in the dashboard. So you see that there are some some limits. Uh, request this month zero tweets this month zero of twenty five k. Tweets this month, search tweets for archive, 30 days. Yeah, so there are limits for all requests, basically. So uh, if you would like to uh, use your app commercially, it's definitely worth to check that. Okay, uh, that's it. And right now I will show you something a little bit more interesting. So it will be live streaming, which is possible and might be really interesting, uh, I think. So, uh, Tweet library allows us to call stream, which is using streaming from, uh, from Twitter. And maybe uh, let's save it and I will explain you while running the code. So, each update that uh, someone is uh, sending, oh, it's working, S which someone is sending to Twitter, so each tweet which is being posted, uh, is immediately uh, caught here and sent to all uh, clients that are listening for, for live stream. And right here, uh, it's working exactly as, as uh, when, when searching. So this is the, the function has a callback uh, called stream on, which is uh, returning as tweets. And right here, we are just logging the text of the tweet and language, which might be also uh, um, interesting for us. And then just a couple lines to just be able to separate that data. So as you see, it's, it's working pretty fast. And we can do some kind of experiment. So I'm using my, my account. Uh, my testing account. So maybe let's tweet something. And yeah, let's maybe just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, it's something. And let's say Elon is great. Person. Hashtag Tesla. Okay. Um, let's tweet it. See, Elon is great person Tesla language, cat. I'm not quite sure uh, how it's categorized because it should be English, I hope. I'm not native, but <laughs> that's pretty simple uh, to, to verify. So uh, let's, let, let's, let's break it and I will show you something also interesting. The other thing that might be interesting for us is just to monitor data uh, from our location. And if you, for example, are a pizza company, uh, pizza delivery company uh, in San Francisco, you might be just interested in, for example, tweets from San Francisco containing maybe pizza work. And this is also possible with Twitter API. So you don't have to rely only on, uh, on, on, on hashtags, but you can uh, also 
uh, be based on the on the location and also tweet is of course uh, supporting that so right here we have a uh, defined latitude and longitude range for san francisco and then we create a stream with filter which is locations and uh, it can be an array of lo locations but in our case it will be just tweets from uh, one location san Fra francisco and uh yeah maybe let's run the code and uh right now it's the middle of the night in san francisco so uh i'm not sure if if any interesting tweet will appear uh right now but i hope that some will uh will show in a moment um, if not we can also just change the location uh oh okay yeah we got something uh there is a tweet when you see your future so yeah anyway uh this is working the tweet was posted probably in san francisco bay area yep as you see the user is in san francisco bay area and right now uh, this kind of uh, monitoring can work on your computer for whole day if you have just enough limits on in on twitter uh, so in our case you might be interested in having some notifications because the node.js app could work in the background and you don't want to spend your whole day just waiting for new tweets to appear so i thought we can do this so at first we have to create a url um, with the uh, tweet user screen name and tweet id string so this url will lead us to to the um, to the uh, screen to to the tweet and then we will use the notifier library so the notifier library uh, is also a library written in javascript especially for node.js which allows us to create a sidebar notification for windows for linux and for mac os of course and we'll use that to create a notification with the title which is the name of the uh, person who sent the tweet and the message will be just the, the tweet it's itself and clicking on this uh, notification will lead us to uh, to this url okay so i'm back i started recording my different screen because i forgot that the notifications always appear on the main screen uh, of my laptop and I, all, I will also just change the stream to to filter the the tesla tweets because uh, it will be just easier to to wait for for this tweet so maybe let's uh, run the app and hopefully some tweet will appear soon and you will see the notification in my top right corner uh, if not then i will just post something using my account okay so there's no notification but we can always use oh yeah there is something okay and yeah uh, it's not english it's uh, some tweet for from serbia but still it has the tesla hashtag you of course can filter those those tweets so yeah basically this is how it's working in uh, probably many companies and how you can build a social media monitoring app at your home. So this is everything I prepared for you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.